what's your financial goal? You want more money? Turn what you know into dough. Start hanging out with the people who have it. You create wealth on your own terms. It is not only your rights, but your duty to build wealth. You are fiscally fabulous, and it's time to enjoy your legacy. You're listening to Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, a podcast that aims to provide you with the tools, guidance, and encouragement you need to build your wealth, enjoy your wealth, and leave a lasting legacy. Dr. Martin is an accomplished attorney, speaker, business consultant, and real estate strategist, an all-around self-made success who provides highly sought-after expert consulting in the creation, growth, and maintenance of generational wealth. Everybody, this is Dr. T. Thank you so much for tuning in again. We are now continuing the GW5, introducing the speakers. And right now, we are now talking to Abira Okede. She is, you know, all things wealth building. She's a real estate investor. She's a CPA. She got it going on. She's a bomb.com. And one of the things that I love, the name of her business is the Wealth Building CPA. And you know how we always talk about branding and you need to let people know exactly what you do. You cannot go to the Wealth Building CPA and not know that Amira Okoye is the Wealth Building CPA. So that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Amira, for joining me on today. How are you? Teresa, thank you so much for having me. I am very excited, very, very excited about this conference. It's, it's one of the things that we talked about. You've been my CPA for a long time, and you always resetting me because, you know, just because just because you make money don't mean you keep it all, right? Like, and she's always the one. You are spending too much. You're not making enough and all of that. She tells you the real deal. And one of the things that I always tell you guys is that anybody can tell you anything. You can buy a Google course. You can do whatever. Numbers don't lie, okay? And so, look, person who knows you the best is your CPA, right? Because it came from the CPA. And that's who Abira has been to me and my husband and helping us on our journey. Um, and so I'm very excited about her being a, a faculty member at GW5. And she's going to be talking about wealth building strategies, but more importantly, crafting your, strat- your strategic wealth plan for abundance. Because we're always talking about generational wealth, building generational wealth, breaking the chains of generational poverty, one business at a time. And that's what it's all about. So Abira, let's kind of jump in about um, strategic wealth plan and that being a game changer. How will attendees be able to craft their plan that aligns with their aspirations and, and help them pave the way for their lasting financial abundance? How would you say they could do that? Yeah, very good question, because one of the things that we've noticed is that a lot of people have like an emotional affiliation to like wealth building. Everybody wants to build wealth. The question is, will you actually get there? And what we've noticed is no matter what the gurus say in front of the room, it all boils down to, are you able to align your actions with your values? And in aligning your actions with your values, you need to look at the skill sets that you have. How come a How much time do you have? What kind of skill do you have? How much money are you making? How does that align with who you are? One of the things I love about wealth building, whether you're doing stocks, real estate, business, anything, any of these can work if you do it on the right foundation. And so one of the things that we're going to be teaching people is get your foundation right. Do a financial needs analysis. Do a core value analysis, do a a legal analysis, analyze everything you have pointy today, and then come up with a plan with a wealth builder, such as whether it's myself or with Teresa, on where do you need to go from point A to point B. And then it's just a matter of working the plan. Um, A lot of times what we've seen is people just jump in, you know, maybe like jump into real estate or start a business and don't have a plan. And then they, you know, 95% of businesses fail within the first five years. It's not because that business idea was not going to work. It's because there was not a strategic plan and a handholding to say, hey, these are the kind of bumps we'll expect along the road. How do you mitigate your risk or manage your risk so that you can get to your destination of eventual wealth building? And and one of the things that you touched upon is like the foundation piece. And we know that Education is important, right? So I, I, I want to premise this, right? I always I want to say slow. Education is important. So you have people going to these courses and going to these 
boot camps and workshops and, you know, everybody is selling everything under the sun. And we know that there are great ideas out there, right? But without that foundation, right, knowing where you are right now, where you want to go, what your skill set is by that needs analysis, so you know how to fill that gap, right? And and that's the problem. problem. Because the other thing could be you have the plan, you have the goals, you have the skill set, you have everything, you've heard everything and found the roof. But what do you need to do tomorrow to be able to implement the plan? You have a lot of people where they're stuck on setting up the entity, but there's a deal that just came through and you didn't take advantage of that deal. And that very well could have been what launched you into your wealth building. So knowing how to navigate the daily challenges of wealth building and knowing what comes first, crawl, walk, run. That's one of my mentors, one of the things that my mentors have said. And a lot of people don't know that. So being able to distill it to a place where they can understand it. Because you get so overwhelmed hearing a lot of things from the front of the room. But when you go back, you have like these five boxes of information, but you don't know how to implement And so the role that we play is really breaking it down in such a way where you are now able to implement no matter which strategy you choose. And and one of the things that, you know, we're going to talk about, and I'm I'm going to ask you this, is since wealth building requires careful planning, right? And we already know that nobody likes to plan. They like the end results of what the plan can do, but nobody really likes to sit down and do the planning because that's the boring part. Mm -hmm. So could you share insights on how attendees can develop a personalized wealth plan that can cater to their unique goals and circumstances, like just a little simple, you know, personalized strategy that can help them. Yeah. So one of the things that we look at is like how much money you have, how much time you have. Let's just say somebody decides that they're going to pick real estate. Well, there's 15 different real estate strategies out there. So with the 15 different real estate strategies out there, which one fits your specific situation? Excuse me, there's people who buy and hold may work for them, but there's other people where you got to start with notes. There's other people where wholesaling. There's other people where rehabbing. There's other people where you're ready for a syndication. So really taking the time to do the financial needs analysis, your time, talent, treasure, money, all of that, and finding a strategy that works so that you don't come back and say, oh, I tried real estate, it didn't work for me. Well, there's several things that you're going to look at. You can take a wholesale course all you want, but if you don't have the personality to go out there and hustle for properties or whatever, you can't come back and say that it failed. Well, it doesn't match who you are. So matching a specific real estate strategy to your skill set and assets and what you have is is huge. I've told people that real estate works anytime. This law business is the backbone of, of the United States. So knowing how to match, whether it's a small business strategy or whether it's a real estate strategy specifically to where you are at this point in time is one of the things that we look at. And a lot of people have been successful that way because they may have been told you can do rehabbing. But if you don't have the money to do the rehabbing, you're not a contractor, you don't know how to deal with con, tractors. If you don't know how to do any of that, you're going to say that real estate doesn't work. But maybe you should not be doing any kind of rehabbing. You should be partnering with others who do know how to rehab and you're still making money. Are you a woman in business or real estate looking to make the most of your income and create generational wealth? Then the GW5 Implementation Conference is for you. On November 10th through 12th, 2023, at the Westchester Marriott in Terrytown, New York, We'll be hosting a must-attend experience for women looking to create and maintain generational wealth. You'll get to interact with certified business professionals who'll teach you how to protect your assets, reduce your taxes, and increase your wealth. Just register today at gw5conference.com. It's not just a conference, it's a movement. One of the things, Avira, like one of the things you've talked about is people get stuck on the entity formation. And I'm going to ask you this because I know that they ask me all the time and I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter in a legal sense what structure you set up as. I believe you need to speak to your CPA first, okay? Because the whole aspect of it is what is your going to, what's going to be your reduction in taxes? You know, what state, what obligations are you going to have from a C-Corp, S-Corp based on your strategy? 
right? And so if your CPA says you need to do the LLC or the S Corp or the C Corp, if that's where you are right now, then I think that that's the first place you start. But people have this whole notion that, okay, the attorney is going to form the entity or whatever, and they go to legal Zoom and things of that sort. And I tell people, you really have to understand how teams work together. And your CPA and your legal team need to be your advisors. You should be on the phone with both of them so that your attorney can you know, address their legal concern and your CPA can address their tax concern and on their asset protection concern, you know, on in all honesty, right? And so what would you say? I mean, because that's what I always say. I want to know that that aligns with what you you tell people when they ask you, where should I form? What entity should I form? Yeah, usually we look at three things. We tell them it depends on what's the most important thing based, again, on your strategy and where you are. The first strategy is tax perspective. What is your tax exposure based on the business strategy, the real estate, the finance strategy that you've chosen? Which entity works best for tax? Then now we go to the attorney. Hey, this is the best entity that works best for taxes. What are all our legal exposure for asset protection? Then after we do that, then now we got to come back and look at the financial piece. What's the cost of compliance? It may be good for taxes and it may be good for, for, for the legal aspect, but compliance-wise, it's costing you an arm and a leg every year. So it doesn't even make sense because you're going to be paying this money every single year. So we usually look at those three legs whenever we advise entity structure. And it has to be a team. There's a lot of times I've said, hey, go back to Teresa. I need to know what she says about this. Don't form anything. Come back to me. Let's now look at how this fits in with taxes and come up with a strategy so that everything that we've been saying now boils down to the strategizing. You need to work it out on paper first before you start implementing. And, and see, guys, this is why I'm telling you, you really need to be at the GW Bob conference. And I know you always hear from me, you know, you probably hear from Coach Moore, you probably hear from, you know, a lot of people, you know, in the, in, in the, in the space, but I'm bringing my inner circle. I'm bringing my wealth builders, my planners, people who I go to and rely on to give me advice. Because one of the things that I'm going to, you know, tell you guys, because I know you sent it in as a question, but one of the things that I'm going to ask a bearer for you guys, and you're going to have to come and really have her and her team help you with numbers, understanding the number game. But Ambira, one of the questions I always get when we talk about the business credit side of things, right? So when they are forming their entities, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, if I got a husband, we're going to do 50-50. If I got a friend, we're going to do 50-50, right? And so what I'm explaining to people from a business legal standpoint is that anyone who owns 20% or more of your business their credit needs to be okay in the 700s or better, or it's going to affect your financeability. Okay. And so I tell people just don't be just trying to form things with friends and, and husbands in there until you understand that needs of analysis, where you are, where you want to go, because it really can help you slow down. I mean, it's not going to help you if you have to slow down because credit is not where it needs to be. So if you had somebody, the attendees going to come with their partners, their spouses, right? Going to be in the man cave, in the mansuary. Uh, what will you tell individuals? One got a 500 credit score and another got an 800 credit score. They want to do an entity together, right? Um, what would you advise them from a, a test perspective? Is that a good thing to, to, to do or what things would they need to look at before they make such, such decisions? Because that's who's coming to the conference. It's very simple. It all boils down to strategize. And I actually had somebody send me an email this morning. They're a 50-50 partnership. And because they're a 50-50 partnership, they're like, well, actually this year it wasn't really 50-50. It was more like 80, 20, 90, 0. Are we able to go back and forth? And I said, good question. That is why the real estate operating agreement that we use is real estate focused. It allows you to make special allocations. So it's possible for you to have a capital ownership, 100, 100, 0, 99, 1, 80, 20, 90, 10, but the profit and loss allocation percentage can be completely different. So really there's no conflict. 
where you're still able to get the best of both worlds because you have the capital percentage that's able to help you meet like the financial requirements and all that. But then when it comes down to the profit and loss, you could still be 50-50. So you could have a 90-10 um, ownership structure with the 50-50 P&L allocation. It just needs to be in your operating agreement that you are allowed to do special allocations based upon you know how much money each person is bringing to the table, what kind of work they're doing. But out, that all boils down to the kind of operating agreement that you have and the way that you set up the entity. So one of the things I do want to say before we before we wrap up, um, because I know I had you and I know you're busy, 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 busy. Uh, but attendees, they are aiming to shape their financial futures. That's why they come to the GW5 implementation conference. So how will your insights, you know, your experience, your expertise empower the attendees to be able to map out a strategic world plan that's going to help them align their aspirations for when they walk out on GW5 into their newfound business. One of the things that I always tell people is I did not start doing this because I wanted to. I kind of fell into it and shut y'all dragged me into it. Because I was primarily a CPA to one of the largest real estate investors in the area, but I'm also a real estate investor. So going to different club meetings. I was like, if ever you have all this knowledge, why aren't you sharing it with us? And so one of the benefits that you get coming to the conference and hearing what it is that we have to present is that it's more of like a foo-foo for us, by us. This, what I'm presenting is what 95% of business owners and investors out there have asked of us. So the package that we put together, the wealth building plan that we put together, the program that we put together, is really different people, wealth building people out there who want to build their wealth that say, hey, Barry, we need help with tax planning. We need help with tax preparation. We need help with setting up the end. What about bookkeeping? Can you help us with analyzing your property? Or oh, the finance person needs this. Can you need with that? Can you talk to our financial plan? So as we're interacting with clients, we're seeing things that somebody who wants to have a full experience has. And the package that we put together, which we're going to be explaining, what all that plan is about was put together by other wealth builders. So it wasn't really, it's not really something that is often, you, you know how, you know, marketers, they try to force something down your throat, no matter what you say, well, get this, you know, work. no, it's really tailored to fit somebody who wants to build wealth because this is over 23 years of looking back and seeing all the things that we've done with wealth builders out there and that they've requested that we offer them where they've seen success. And this is this is why the GW5 implementation conference is something that's different and unique because you, we started 8 a.m. and we ended at 11 p.m. We got the awards gala on Saturday where you're going to be dressing in your finest attire. Um, and it's just going to be something that, you know, you can celebrate. Celebrate where you are. Celebrate where you want to go. And celebrate with your peers. We have media. We have legal. We have, we have finance. We have real estate. We... We have all the industries represented, but everyone's coming to learn the next. No one's coming with that. I'll know everything. There's always something to learn. So if you haven't gotten your ticket now, it's gw5conference.com. If you can't make the whole conference, you might just want to come to the gala. The gala is only $200 for Saturday night, starts at 7, ends at 11. You will have a great time there too. But I encourage you to come the full three days because you're going to learn how to Build, grow, master, and leave a legacy. It's all about generational wealth. Generational Wealth Zone is about building generational wealth, breaking the chains of generational poverty, one business owner at a time. I want to include you into the family. We're inviting you. Abira, as a faculty member, we're inviting you. This is the first of many to come, so we encourage you to get your ticket. Any last-minute words you have, Abira, for anybody? Yeah, one thing that I can definitely tell you is I want to see you there. For many reasons, this is how I started. This is how all of us started. We started by going to these different meetings, mastermind meetings, learning, and being where we are today. I would not be where I were, I am today if I was not around a group of people who were like-minded, sharing the same information, where you're able to, they help you to pick out what's real and what's false and what's just people just smoke, smoke and mirrors, just try to confuse you with a lot of information, um, I would not be speaking at the G5, a GW5 conference 
if I could not stand behind the organizers and the people that are there, the information is going to be genuine. Nobody's going to be trying to push anything on you. You're going to get information to help you make the right decision for wealth building. And that's what I want you guys to know. It is a family reunion, right? You, you cousins we ain't seen before. We're the couple we ain't meet in a long time, but this is what it's going to be about. It's going to be so much fun. Go on to the conference, our website at gw5conference.com. Get in where you fit in. We'd love to see you there. Without further ado, this is Dr. T, your favorite legal business and real estate strategist, and I look forward to seeing you at GW5. Have a good one now. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire. If you would like to learn more on how you can build generational wealth and leave a lasting legacy, go to www.enjoyyourlegacy.com and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Until next time.